I see that one looks difficult. Oh, if I can do it, you can. Do you really think so? Oh, sure. Well, then I'll have a try. That's it. I say, I've chugged. <laughs> this is rather jolly, isn't it? Do you mind if I have another go? Oh, no, go right ahead. Thank you. <laughs> oh, dear, what a pity I missed. Did you ever play Mama's Cat when you were a kid? I don't think I ever was a kid. Besides, our sports were somewhat different. Oh. Oh, boy, you really missed something. We used to play at locks back in Waterbank. You know, there was a kid called Stinky that always had us chawing dirt on Ruth the Peg. Always. What an amazing fellow, did he really? Oh, sure, he was good at everything. Gosh, we used to have fun before Dad struck it rich. He was just an oil well rigger then. And we used to have picnics and go fishing and over the world. That, to my mind, if I may say so, is a hot job. I don't think I'll ever be able to do that one. Oh, it's only Uncle Ed. Riding around on a motor scooter because he's too lazy to walk. You'd never think he had the best and biggest fix-it shop in Waterbank, would you? No, indeed, Miss Geraldine. Hmm. I'm sorry, I mean Miss Jerry. Oh, that's much better. Over the earth. Oh, uh, over the world. Oh, yes, of course, yes. Yes, I'm not very successful. Let's see, uh, that makes 35 cents you owe me. Yes. Come on now, top knot. Top knot? Yes, like this, look. Oh, I'll never be able to do that one. Oh, you won't know till you try. Go ahead. Oh. No, not that way. You'll really hurt yourself. Oh. Oh, by the blade, like that. Oh. Well? Very well, thank you. There's the grapefruit you ordered for Miss Geraldine. Let me go now, Roger. That is, if you are quite through. Quite through. Thank you. Hey! Don't forget my 40 cents. Oh, yes, I beg your pardon. Oh, well. Thanks, and, uh, better luck next time. In our next contest, I shall endeavor to chaw the dirt while you root the peg. Really, Geraldine, you must realize you're a very trying pupil. Sure, I'm trying. Trying to have a little fun. <laughs> I must say, your ideas of fun are most unusual. Oh, yeah. Geraldine... How many times do I have to tell you not to use that vulgar expression? Geraldine! Huh? Oh! Oh, gee, Miss Penny. I wish you'd call me Jerry, because I never know who you're talking to. If you will please restrain your impetuosity long enough to sit at this table, we shall continue our grapefruit lessons. But, Miss Penny, I've already eaten three this morning. Look. Wouldn't you like this half if I put some nice sugar on it for you? I know how to eat it, Geraldine. You are the one who is practicing. Now, place the tip of the spoon between the skin and the fruit and insert it easily. Like this. Try it. But Miss Penny... Geraldine. Okay. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Perhaps we better skip the whole thing, because I've got some important things to do. Geraldine, you will sit right at the table until you want to learn to eat your grapefruit properly. And when you're finished eating it, you can think about it. Okay, I'll think about it. But I won't eat it! Of course, that's for you to decide. However, I shall lock you in here until you do eat it. Oh, yeah? Hey, you can't do that to me! Oh, yeah? I mean... Indeed, I can. Hey, Miss Penny! This is the J.C. Darden place. Shall I drive in? No, never mind. I'll walk up. That'll be $2.75, sir. Thank you.
seen a tall guy come this way? He's got on a blue coat, white flannels, and a skipper's cap. Why, no, I haven't. But could you tell me... Well, keep an eye peeled for him. Look out! Oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll drive better when I get a few more lessons. Have you seen a man in a... a... Blue coat, white flannels, and a skipper's cap? Oh, you've seen him? Which way did he go? I don't know. I haven't seen him. You haven't seen him? How did you know how he was dressed? Well, the little man on the scooter told me. Oh. Well, we may as well find him. You never can tell what he'll do lately. And I'd hate to have the neighbors think that he... Oh, are you one of the neighbors? One of the Van Cortlands, maybe? Oh, I might have known. I don't know what's the matter with the neighbors here. Back home in Waterbank, they call as soon as you move in. But here, I've even been to their houses and they tell me they're not at home. I had trouble getting a taxi, and I... Hey, who are you? Jerry Darlington. You're from Dad's New York office, aren't you? Yes, I'm Peter Graham. Can you tell me where I can find you, Dad? Put the gardener's ladder up here, Pete, and we can talk better. I haven't time to talk to you. I only want to find your father. Shh. You can't unless you come up. I'm the only one who knows where he is. Oh, please. It's important. Come on, right up here. Come on. There, I have it. Come on up. Shh. Are you the office manager? No, just the clerk. You see, the firm's had difficulty in reaching your father. But yesterday we had a letter from him asking that certain papers be flown down here. Yes, I know all about it. I smuggled the letter out. So I... Smuggled? Now, look here. I only want to deliver these papers to your father, get his signature, and fly back to New York. It's all perfectly simple, straight business. That's what you think. Look, Pete, Pop's in trouble. Well, and if they catch him... The police? No, the family. He wants to work, and they won't let him. Why, the doctor won't even let him read a telegram. Oh, then he's the one they're all looking for. Sure. They're taking him down to the fishing lodge this morning to keep him nice and quiet. So, I had to hide him out until you got here with the deal. Oh, gee, Pete, what am I going to do? He's only happy when he's working, and, and if they keep nagging him about retiring and going for all this crazy social stuff, he will have a nervous breakdown. Then the first thing for us to do is to get this merger contract to him. You mean you're going to help me? Sure. Oh, oh, oh. Well, into the little room off the service quarters. Just go around to the back and knock like this. And I'll try to stall him until you get finished. I've got it. Jenny. Jenny? Yeah, she's my sister. You won't give me away, will you, Pete? Second story works nice if you can get it. I admit it looks rather bad, but I'm looking for Mr. J.C. Darlington. Then you've got the wrong window. Now, do you come down or do I ride you off? Hey, wait a minute. I'll come down. You know, we put thieves on chain gangs down here. Now, get out. But I'm not a thief. I'm here in legitimate business, Miss Darlington. I want to see your father. Oh, like that, huh? Now you get out. I'm going. Come out of there. If you don't come out, I'll call the police. Mr. Darlington? Come in. How'd you find me? Your daughter told me. The smaller one. Oh, great little girl, Jerry. Were you followed? I don't think so. Good, good. Will you have a drink, Mr. Uh... Graham, Peter Graham, from the New York office. Yes, I will. Good, help so, help so. Uh, make me another. Those are the papers you sent for on the Bennett Carson merger. You know your option expires tomorrow noon. That's what's been worrying me, Graham. Worrying me no end. A dash of lemon, sir? What? No, 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 no. Oh, uh, should it have? It helps. <laughs> yeah, I don't know much about drinks. As a matter of fact, it's the first time in my life I've ever used stuff. 
Well, it might be just what you need. No, no, it isn't doing any good. It doesn't seem to take hold somehow. It gives me a nice little lift. Oh, they're all ready for your signature, sir. Oh, oh, it's hopeless. Must be more than 30 pages. Uh, and I never read a thing without signing. I mean, I never sign uh, at all. It's hopeless. Well, I'll wait, sir. It's hopeless, I tell you. My family would find me before I got halfway through and... <laughs> soapless. Oh, come now. It's not as bad as that, sir. You start reading, and I'll keep a lookout for the family. Yeah, no you say sneak up on you. I've been in the same situation before. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. It's soapless. Mr. Darlington. Mm. Mr. Darlington. Where's Dad? Asleep. A fine one you are leaving me up on that ladder. Even when your sister thought I was a burglar, would you help me out? Oh, no. But Pete, it worked better this way. While she was chasing you, I used the ladder to get out. But I might have been arrested. Well, you weren't, were you? Say, did Dad sign the deal? He wouldn't without reading it. I've got to wake him up. Oh, no. Gee, it's the first decent sleep he's had in ages. Say, what's that funny smell like molasses? Uh-oh. Did he drink all of this? It looks like it. Well, then I guess he'll have a nice long sleep. <laughs> Pete, I've got an idea. If it includes me, don't have it. One idea of yours got me up on that ladder. But look, I, I told you the family was taking him to the fishing lodge, didn't I? Yes. Well, Pop always drives the boat. And from the cabin, you can't tell who's in the wheelhouse. So? So, if a man was in the wheelhouse with Pop's clothes on, the family would never know the difference. And we could take them all to the fishing lodge and keep them there. That is, until Pop had a chance to wake up and read the deal through. How about it, Pete? Will you do it? Well, you... You mean, will I be the man that... No. But there's nothing to it. The luggage is all aboard, and the boat's ready to leave. All we have to do is toot the sign and they'll come a-running. Why, it's a cinch. It's a cinch, all right, that I am leaving right now. But I thought you said you wanted to help him. Not that way. I'll be at the Biltmore. When your father signs a deal, let me know. <laughs> oh, now, Jerry. Please don't take it like that. I can't help it. Poor Dad. He's so tired. He's so discouraged. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> if the family fights him like this, they'll probably send him to a sanitarium, and then they'll never let him work anymore. <laughs> and all because one of his trusted clerks wouldn't help him. Refused to lend a helping hand when he needs it most. But, Jerry, I... Oh, you can't let him down, Pete. If you do this fine, he'll never forget it. But do you think he'll understand why we did it? Well, I mean, if he wakes up and finds us gone... Then you'll do it? Oh, gosh, Pete, you're swell. But how about your sister, Virginia? You know, she's dynamite. Hurry and change with Dad. You can undress in the other room. <laughs> but I'll not write him a note and he'll have nothing to worry about. I'll be out of here in a jiffy. Yes. Have you ever driven a boat? Once. Swell. Then we're all set. Here they come. Jerry, this is ridiculous. They'll come up here and... Oh, no, they won't. I'll keep them away from you. You just watch. But... Hello, Mom. Well, I never... The very idea of your father worrying to death like this. We searched all over for him. Will I tell him? Oh, I wouldn't, Mom. Not right now. You see, I had a terrible time coaxing him to come along, and um, he might not go at all. And you know how sorry he gets if anyone bothers him in the wheel. But he has no right to worrying us like this. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Are you sure you can spare it? You bet I can, Ed Mulligan. And let me tell you something. I've got too much sense to think I can live on my brother-in-law forever and get away with it. Oh, Minnie, go below, will you? 
snap it up, Ginny. You know, uh, Miss Penny's not here to restrain your, uh, impetuosity. Too bad she can't do more to restrain yours, Geraldine. I'm thinking of after we get there. Oh, Jerry, I can't go through with it. There's trouble coming. I can feel it. But you haven't got a thing to worry about. I'll explain to them and everything is going to be all right. Well, let's suppose your dad doesn't see the note. Why, he's sure to. I put it where he can't miss it. Right in the pocket of his shirt. Oh. What's the matter? Are you seasick? You put it in... You took his shirt, too? Well, you told me to change clothes with him, didn't you? That settles it. We're going straight back. Oh, no. You're not going to undo all the good we've done. Besides, Dad'll just think we went to the lodge without him. And you can bet he won't follow us. But he'll fall. He can't. There are no cables to these islands. We'll get him enough time to read the papers, and then we'll go back tonight. I'd feel better if he had this. Well, it doesn't do us any good now. Well, we're almost there. I do hope your father will just relax and rest. That's what I'm going to do. If you relaxed anymore, you'd be in a coma. We interrupt this program to bring you a late flash from Miami. J.C. Darlington, star of the oil industry, has just been found under the back porch of his Miami Beach home in his underwear. Oh, Jeff. My Virginia was Listen. Police believe he was slugged and robbed of his clothing by unknown assailants and are searching for a prowler reported earlier in the day by Miss Virginia Darlington. The man was routed by the daughter of the magnet as he attempted to climb into a second-story window. Nothing further can be learned until Mr. Darlington regains consciousness. Listen to our regular news broadcast for further development. He's unconscious. Oh, Jim. Then who's driving this boat? Oh. The slugger. Where is he taking us? What's he going to do with us? He's got Jerry. Mother, don't you go. Uncle Ed, you do something. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you. You better come on down. Ed, if you don't go up there and get him, I will. Hey, you. Better come down from there. 
I've... I've got a gun, and I'll shoot to kill. Oh, I don't think he's got a gun. Come down, or, or I come up shooting. But he seems to think he has. Well, I guess the time's come, Pete. I'll go down and fix you up. Listen, you keep the wheel and stay out of this. I'm going and tell him the whole ridiculous thing. He's coming. man I saw this morning. I saw him, too. So did I. Put him up. Try to kill me, will you? That was an accident. One more of them and I'll shoot. What did you do to my husband? I'll be very happy to explain it, Phil. Point that gun somewhere else. Oh, sure. He hasn't any gun. That's just nonsense. It is not. He thought I had a gun. But you wouldn't have shot him, could you? It's so silly to pretend. If you two will stop scrapping, maybe we'll find out why he's drunk, Dad. I didn't. You did. The radio said so. Did you hurt him? He isn't hurt a bit, Mrs. Darlington. Then why is he unconscious? Because he drank too much rum. That proves you're lying. My husband never touched a drop of liquor in his life. Right. He's honorary enough without it. Well, that's gratitude for you. After all Jim's done for you, you... Mother, Uncle Ed, will you let this man talk? Not that we believe a word you say. But it's the truth. I'm Peter Graham from Mr. Darlington's New York office. He sent for some papers on the Bennett Carson merger. Well, he couldn't have. We watch him all the time. But he did. Jerry told me she smuggled the letter out. There you are. If there's any trouble, she's in on it. Then she got me up on that ladder to tell me where Mr. Darlington was. But when I got to him, he'd passed out. So he stole his clothes. Just a boyish prank, I suppose. But it's the truth, I tell you. Wait a minute. Jerry! Jerry! They don't believe me. You've got to tell them. You'll have to wait till I get past this island. But you've got to tell them now. I'll take the wheel. Oh, okay, Pete. And don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Look out! Ah! Oh! Ah! A fine thing. A whole ocean to cruising, and you hit a reef. Well, you ought to be glad I hit one here in Ireland. Take it easy now. You go right up there. Yeah. yeah. Take it easy there. Come on, Jerry. Okay. Watch your step, Dominique. So if Jim had been here, this never would have happened. Oh, has anyone the faintest yeah. idea where we are? Yeah, we're on a desert island. And we're shipwrecked to Maroon, just like you read about in the book. Well, not marooned exactly. We still got this raft to get away on. Uh, I'll, I'll just move it up here where it'll be safe. Now we're marooned. What in the world did you do that for? I didn't do it. It did it. Why should I always get the blame for everything? Because if anything's wrong, it's your fault, Ed Mulligan. Now take this rat. You take it. It's no good dust now. Now don't you two stop bickering. This is serious. Do you realize that our boat sunk and that we're stuck here for, for days, maybe? And we're completely in the power of this slugger? I'm not a slugger. For heaven's sakes, Jerry, tell them. Of course I will. Now, I never saw him slug, Dad. Oh. Oh. Now don't feel bad, Mom. He couldn't be hurt very much if they're only waiting for him to regain consciousness. Why, well, yes, that's so. But tell them about me. Oh, yes. Well, when I went up to the wheelhouse, there he was in Dad's clothes. But why did I have them on? Oh, to fool you all into thinking he was Dad. That's obvious. Why, you're making it sound terrible. But I've got to tell them the truth. Why didn't you let us know? Uh, oh, I couldn't. I was afraid of what might happen. There you are. I guess that clinches it. You, you slugger. Why, you... Oh! Don't you touch that, child. Oh, he got me. It's only silly it was me. Stop chasing that child. Stop this nonsense. I'm only trying to... Hey! Bring them if you can, Virginia. Stop him. Stop him. Oh, he must have gone that way. Go on, Virginia. I'm right behind you. You would be. Sure. Oh, huh? where is she? Jerry! Jerry! Why, you... Shh. Can't you see what I'm doing, Pete? Of course I can. Getting me hung. Don't be silly. This is working out swell. Swell? 
Oh, can't you see, Pete? Here on a desert island, they'll have to work for their food. Get back to all the everyday things they've forgotten about. Oh, this is great. We'll never have another chance like it. But why do you want them to think that I'm a criminal? So they'll be afraid of you. Somebody's got to force them to work. I've got it. You're going to be a caveman. Look, Jerry, I don't want to be a caveman. I just want to go to Miami and clear myself. But you can't anyway. Besides, you can clear yourself any old time. But right now, think of the folks. But Virginia... Well, I mean your sister. Look what she thinks of me already. Ah, uh, after all the fortune-hunting sap she's been bored with, you'd be a relief. Why, she might even fall for you. Fall for me? Why, sure, why not? I think you're swell, and you'll do it, won't you? You don't have to really get rough. Just boss him. No. Okay, I can't make you do it. But remember, the family will believe me, not you. Oh, Mommy! Jenny! Uncle Ed! Jerry, where are you? What are you going to do? You won't help me, so... All right. I'll try. I know I'm crazy, but... I'll try. You will? Oh, gee, Pete, that's swell. And don't worry, everything's gonna be all right. Jerry! Oh, Jerry, where are are you? Quick, hide. There she is. Oh, Jerry. Oh, Oh, Jerry. Are you all right? Did he catch you? What did he do? Are you hurt? Oh, no, I'm all right. Just scared, I guess. Oh, Mother, I can still see his terrible eyes. Feel his hot breath on my neck. And I'll dream about his chasing me. Oh, you... Poor child. Where did he go? Don't worry, he won't get away. Oh! Oh! Here he comes! Oh! Oh, please! Don't hit them! Drop that! Oh! Are you going to let this this pipsqueak scare you? What'd you call me? You heard me, a pipsqueak. And that's what you look like. Well, regardless of what I look like, I'm in charge here. Hmm. In charge of what? Why, in charge of us, I guess. Do we know how to live on a desert island, find our own food, and and build fires and things? Well, he isn't in charge of me. Oh, no? Well, we'll see. Anyone who doesn't take orders doesn't eat. Is that understood? First, we have to have a fire. Who's got a match? I have. Oh, never mind. He can make a fire without matches. You see... He's part Indian. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll take charge of the fire. You, get firewood. Oh, well, as soon as my foot's better, get it now. All right, all right. I'm getting it. Well, I never saw Ed move so fast in my life. You, get some food. Oh, I couldn't eat a bite. Well, we can. Go on. Uh, You better humor him, Mom. Nonsense, how dare he speak to me like that. Young man, do you know who my husband is? Oh. Of course you do. You slugged him. I didn't slug him. Oh, gee, you're doing great, Pete. Now for Virginia. Well, I don't know. Oh, you can't weaken now. Send up for berries or something. She doesn't look as though she'll go. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Miss Darlington? Call her Virginia. Uh, Virginia? Uh, Virginia! You get berries. Any special kind? Raspberries, perhaps? You better get some of every kind you can find, Ginny, so he can see if they're poisonous or not. If Robinson Crusoe will eat them to find out, I'll be glad to get them. Well, she went. She must have wanted to. Oh, no. That's just her way of giving in gracefully. Oh, gee, if Dad could only have seen you, you were great. Now, the next thing you do... I do, you do. You start the fire without matches. Why, Pete! All right! Virginia, get out! Come on, quick! Well, I'll be... A desert island. And here I thought getting the folks back to nature would do them so much good. What about me? Now, you look here. You've got to clear me or the people in this house will phone the police. But I told you, there are no cables to these islands. Well, I guess nobody's here. Just told me to break a window. A little one. Say, it doesn't look like anybody's home. Why not go in this way? There's an idea. Oh, hello. 
Anybody home? Well, there must be somebody here. Somebody, anybody. Tidy little shack. Hope we can get a free meal. That shouldn't be new to you. You get all your meals free. Well, since you got too high and mighty to cook them, they've been better. Is that so? Well, let me tell you, Ed Mulligan, I can still do mother. Uncle Ed, please. If someone is here, we'd better try to find them while we can. I'll take upstairs. I'll take the kitchen. You would. Right. It looks awfully civilized, Pete. Well, if nobody's here, our plan will still work. Our plan? Why, sure. Aren't we going to... No phones in these islands, eh? That's funny. Funny? Hello? Police department. No, we don't want any. I mean, there must be some mistake. We didn't call you. I know you didn't. I'm calling you. I want a policeman. We haven't got any. Now look here, young woman. Don't be flip. It's only Mom. Hello, police department. Hello, Mom. This is Jerry. Say, where are you? I'm on an island. We've just had the most dreadful wreck. Uh, oh, don't be silly, Jerry. You were with us. I, I mean, you are. Oh, get off the line, Jerry. I'm trying to get a policeman. Hello? Oh, hello. Police department? Yes, yes. How did you happen to call us? Oh, we need help. We've been hijacked. So we. How can the police department be hijacked? Look here, my man. I'm not the police department. You are. Oh, no. I'm Ed Mulligan. It's Uncle Ed. What are you eating? Sardines. Ed, get off the line. I almost had them. Operator. Operator. She's got the operator. Operator, get me the police department, quick. You've got to pretend like you're the police. Change your voice. Hello? This is the police department. Police! We've been wrecked on a desert island. Send a wagon and a couple of cops. Please listen, you must send help at once. You better hurry up. There's hardly anything left to eat. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't understand you. Ed, will you get off the line? You get off, so I can tell them. Hello, police? Yes, go ahead. This is Virginia Darlington. We're marooned in Anana with a man who slugged my father. I did not slug your father. Uh, I'll send a man over. I'll send a whole squad. Right over. Hello, police department. Mother, know, Uncle Ed, we're just Can talking to each other. These are only house phones. See? I told you there weren't any cables. There'll probably be something worse. I'm going to have a look around. Me too. I know who this house belongs to. Joshua Cowan. His name's on this cover. And uh, the book plate says Joshua Cowan, too. And this must be his photograph album. The Millionaire Chickle King? He's one of the 400. And we're in his house. Well, but it took a shipwreck to get you in. Oh, well. All we gotta do now is wait for him to come home. Do you realize what it would mean to appear in Miami in his boat? Huh. Society would have to take us up. Well, maybe he only uses this place in the winter time. Oh, dear. We can't wait that long. I'm afraid we won't have to. The radio's working. If nobody is living here, why is electricity on? <laughs> I was standing there, right by the wheel, see? And the guy was over there to the right. Oh, that must be Mr. Cowan now. Oh, dear. I wish I'd drift. Uh, Ed, put your coat on. Don't worry, Pete. Well, this is the hangout. Come on in. How do you like it, Mama? Hey, I gotta hand it to you, Daddy. Joints everything you said was. Yeah. And how do you do? What's this? Relations? It told me the Collins wouldn't be back for three months. Oh, gee. It must have been a mistake. Oh, no, no. Not a mistake. An accident. Our boat was wrecked. Oh, that's tough. Um, um, uh, uh. We must have got balled up somewhere, Mrs. Cowan. I'm sure, Mrs. Cowan. Yeah, me too. <laughs> this is Mr. Cowan. Oh, uh, glad to meet you, Mr. Mr. Cowan. But you're Mr. Cowan. Mr. Cowan thought you both had the same name. Oh, oh yeah. You know one meets so many Cowans. I'm afraid we didn't get your name. Oh, how stupid of me. <laughs> Mr. Cowan, I'm Mrs. Darlington. How do you do? <laughs> and these are my two daughters, Virginia and Geraldine. And my brother, Ed Mulligan. <laughs> We're all one happy family. 
Except this person. I get it. For a minute, I thought I'm that you... I'm Donald Gower, Mr. Cowan's attorney and an old friend of the family's. Yeah, an old, old attorney, yeah. Well, this is Captain Stubbs in charge of Mr. Cowan's boat. Hi, Captain. Hi. I hope you handle your boat better than we did ours. We landed on a rock. Mrs. Cowan, you've already met. Sure. But if you'd met me this morning, it wouldn't have been Mrs. Cowan. You see, we just got hitched. <laughs> and me only known him two days. Newlywed? How sweet. I must give a big party for you when we arrive in Miami. Well, I could use it. <laughs> oh, it's a shame to intrude on your honeymoon, Mrs. Cowan. But you see, we've had a very unpleasant experience. This man's... Oh, that's right. Uh, Mr. Gower, that man is a hijacker. Huh? I am not. You are so. And a slugger. Hijacker, what do you mean? Mother, don't be dramatic. It's hardly as serious as that. What have you got there? Where? Behind your back. Why, nothing. Uh, neither have I. Come on, hand it over. I will not. You better do what the counselor tells you, babe. She'll do it. Just a minute. But Give me that. Don't show oh, torture. Oh, 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 Pete! Oh, my eyes! Pete! See? I told you he was a slugger. And how? He's a dangerous man, Mr. Cowan. Better tie him up. Don't be silly, Mother. These people are not the Cowan. Huh? Wait a minute, sister. We are, too. At least that's the name he married me under this morning. Then take a look at this. Oh, now, look, babe. I, I wouldn't... Why, you low-down lion hail you. You ain't him, who the van, are you? Well, it's like this, honey pie. Us three guys been living here all winter, and... Uh huh and I've been using the name of Colin. We thought that maybe it'd be a better idea... Who are you? Well, sweetheart, my name's Buster, and you're Mrs. Buster Mussendorfer. But don't get sore about it. Mussendorfer! And I felt for your hooey. What's it after this poor show in Havana? For what? A Mussendorfer! Say, I know that name. Smells all over Cuba. Small-time smuggler running Chinese. Oh. Why, this is terrible. Yeah, taking advantage of a decent day, bringing me to a place where I might get pinched. This car will head in here any minute and skid us all out in our ears. Oh, no, he won't. He's in California. Oh, nice people I got mixed up with. You get me out of here. You take me back to Havana. And while you're taking Mrs. Mussendorfer, uh, could you drop us off at Miami? You keep out of this. And don't call me Mrs. Mussendorfer. Oh, Toots. And don't call me Toots. Oh. We interrupt this program to bring you a new and sinister aspect to the J.C. Darlington case. In what is now heralded by police as the kidnapping of the century, it has been found that the beautiful wife of J.C. Darlington, his two lovely daughters, and his brother-in-law were abducted today from their Miami Beach home. There. You see, you did do it. At first, it was supposed that the Darlington family had gone to their fishing lodge as was planned, but a police checkup revealed that they had never appeared there. Mr. Darlington, recovering from the dastardly attack, said in a Miami News interview, quote, I never saw my assailants. When I came to, I was in my underwear. And he looks terrible in his underwear. I believe my family was tricked into my boat by one of the criminals clad in my clothes. A blue coat, tan flannels, and a yachting cap with the initials J.C.D. on the sweatband. Every force of law and order is mobilizing on land and sea. The whole nation is crying for the rescue of the victims and the death of the heinous criminals. We will bring you more later. J.C.D. Checks. Mrs. Darlington was right. Prisco. There's been a terrible mistake. Uh, hitting me was one. Take it easy. You'd better or you'll get another one. Yeah? Yeah. So, that's what 80 million bucks worth of family looks like, huh? They've already been snatched. So they have. Very unfortunate. Mm. Then you'll take us back? Have no fear, Mrs. Darlington. We'll take care of you. We mean, uh, Miami. Exactly. We'll see that you get to Miami safe and sound. Now, that's real nice of you, even if you are smugglers. Can we go now? Well, not exactly. You must remember that we're in some danger of uh, capture ourselves. As you say, only for smuggling, not for an inhuman crime like kidnapping. I'm not a kidnapper. But when can we go? Well, after dark, Miss Darlington. Yeah, way after dark. Well, I don't mind waiting if we eat. Oh, it's an excellent idea. I wonder if the ladies uh, could... Uh... Get supper? Why, my mom's the best cook in the whole wide world. Oh, no, really, Jerry. Oh, go ahead, Mom. Tell them how good you are. Well, I used to be fairly good. It's a rare thing to find, a woman of wealth and culture who can cook, Mrs. Darlington. Well, I'll try, but don't expect too much. I haven't been in the kitchen for a long time. Come on, Virginia. I'll come, too. Oh, you will, will you? Well, let me tell you, Ed Mulligan, if you come into my kitchen, you work. No nibbling at things. I uh, think I'll go down to the beach and get some wood for the fire. 
before it gets a little chilly. There's plenty of wood right here. Oh, but not driftwood. You see, it hasn't got all those pretty colors. No? Yes. Hey, wait a minute. It's all right. She can't do any harm. Now I take care of you. Come wait on. Wait a minute. I think we better have a little talk. But not in here. But if you let me explain. Shut up. Outside, you. The counselor says outside. Now look here. Sit down. Well, what are you going to do? We don't know exactly. We haven't decided as yet. I have. Don't be impatient, Stubbs. Who's your contact man? My contact man? You don't mean you're working alone. Ain't he got the nerve, though? But you've got this all wrong. How much asking from Darlington? Nothing. I tell you, I didn't. Just as well you're not. What would be worth a million to Darlington to get his family back safe and sound? And we split three ways. What do you mean? We're taking over, palsy Welsy. And without you. But that's murder. You'll hang for it. be worth it. All the same, I'd like to avoid it if we could think of something smarter. There ain't nothing smarter. I guess he's right, Counselor. All right, Stubbs. Walk him up the beach a ways. Now you're talking. But you've gotten made a mistake. I'm no kidnapper. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Please. Don't hurt him. It's all my fault. I got him into this. Hurt him? Why, my dear child, we wouldn't do a thing like that. Oh, yes, you would. I heard you. Those are only threats. Yes, yeah, sure. We was just riding them, kid. So you run in the house. Come on. Ouch. But I can explain everything if you'll just let me. You see, I... In the house. Okay, it's your business. But I thought you said you'd rather do something smart. Go on. Hey, wait a minute. What do you mean? Well, if he's the criminal, and if he's the one that the man on the radio said everybody's looking for, then nobody knows about you. So why should you... Hey, wait a minute. Shut up. The kid's right. Get it? No. no. But what's the first thing in kidnapping that pins a crime on you? Mark money. No, you lug. The ransom notes. What the kid means, he fronts for us. He writes the note in his own handwriting. Oh, no, I don't. Then it's his crime, and he takes the risk, see? I get it. Even if we get caught up with we're in the clear. I still like my way best. Oh, uh, don't be a fool. Come on, we write the note and have him copy it, and Stubbs can take it to Miami after dark. Hey, what do you mean? And leave this guy here alone? Well, why not? He can't get off the island, can he? He can if he can swim 20 miles. <laughs> Come on, Stubbs. Say, you're a smart kid. That idea was all right. Oh, I get lots of ideas. Hey, wait a minute, Pete. Please. Didn't I just save your life? Sure, for the electric chair. When they take that note into Miami, I'm done for. Oh, they won't take it into Miami. But they will. They just said so. But they can't. That is, uh, not unless they can run their boat without this. What is it? Their distributor head. You mean you... Why, sure, I took it out. Uncle Ed showed me how once. And that's the driftwood I went for. Now we can escape whenever we get the chance. Whenever we get the chance? Do you realize what'll happen to us when they find out? Oh, no. They wouldn't do that. Then they'd never get their distributor head. Jerry, you put that thing right back. And let them take the note to Miami? Here, quick, hide it. Oh, no, I have nothing to do with it. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Won't you come in? I mean, out? Sure you wouldn't rather be alone to plot our destruction? Oh, no, I'd much rather you were here. Well, I mean... That's all right. I only wanted to thank you. Thank me? Yes, for protecting me from that dreadful stub. Even if you are a kidnapper, that was chivalrous. Listen, Virginia, everything I told you in the boat was true. You've got to believe me now because you're in danger. We all are. You too? What do you mean? Well, these men, they're thugs and killers. And they're holding you off for a million dollars ransom. Oh, I see. And you're in danger of losing your share of it. Now you see here. I'm sick and tired of this nonsense. I'm no criminal. I'm one of your father's clerks. Do you expect me to believe that? You know, clerks don't order people about like you did. Oh, that was just one of Jerry's crazy ideas to get you all down to earth. She thought if you were afraid of me, then you'd all have to go to work again. You know, that sounds very possible. Sounds? It's the truth. 
And you really brought some papers to Dad and all that? Of course I did. Pete, I believe you. Then you will tell your mother and uncle? Because I don't want them to There's think... There's no use in telling them anything until we plan what to do. We? Of course. I want to help. Virginia. Pete! Hey, Pete! The council wants you. I'll see you later. I've got to go and write the ransom note. A ransom note? Why, you just told me I that know, I... know, but they're forcing me to do it or else. Or else you won't get your money, is that it? No. Virginia, I told you. Of course you did, but you don't think I'm fool enough to believe it. Yes. No, I mean... Pete, are you coming? I've got to go now, Virginia. But please believe me. Please. Underscore the part about not trying to give us Mark money. A new and important bulletin on the Darlington kidnapping. Hey, Consul. Naval officials just revealed that orders have been given to send 20 fast radio-equipped planes roaring into the air to aid in the search for the kidnapped victims. Every foot of ocean, every island and swamp will be combed, and it is only a matter of time until the hideout is discovered. Gee, we better work fast. And nobody goes outdoors. Come on, snap it up. I am. Oh. All right, all right, start over. <coughs> you know, Ed, this is kind of like back in Waterbank, isn't it? Me getting dinner and you tinkering with the stove. Remember how I always wanted an electric one? Your house in Miami has one. Has it? Well, I've never even seen it. Well, when we get back home, I'm going to try it out sometime. That's the way to talk, Minnie. You know, I've been hankering after one of your meals for a long time. Have you, Ed? I wonder if Jim and the kids ever have. I'll lay your money they have. We never had a cook in Miami that could hold a candle to you. <laughs> now, that's real sweet of you, Dad. I guess I was a pretty good cook in those days, from what Jim's friends used to say. Remember how they were always stopping in from the oil field around mealtime? <laughs> and the night they kept stopping in, one by one, each pretending he was looking for the other? <laughs> <laughs> that was the night before the big oil fire. Remember it? The sky? And Jim didn't come home. Oh, I was scared sick. You know, Ed, I made a vow that night that if Jim did come home safe and sound, I'd never speak another cross word to him again as long as I lived. And you did real well, Minnie. By taking it out on me. I swore I'd never nag him about working, either. Well, it's not too late to keep that vow. At least you never find Jim Darlington idling around like some people, sponging on his relatives. This is where I came in. Hey, where do you think you're going? Out? Well, don't. The counselor says it ain't safe. Oh, well, if he says so, he must have some reason. <laughs> Tell him we won't. Yeah. Dinner's ready. Come on, everybody. Ed, what are you doing? Honey pie, are you going to eat with Papa? I'm going to eat. Oh, oh. Where's the kid? Oh, she'll be here in a minute. You never have to call Jerry when there's food around. Have some of these biscuits, Mrs. Musk. Uh, uh, miss? Isn't that a plane? Yes. Maybe they're looking for us. Here we are. Say who you think you are. Indians. You fool, it must be the kid trying to signal the plane. Nobody leaves this room. Stop it. It is, Jerry. I saw him take the arrows. Don't kill him. You heard what the counselor says. Everybody stays in. Oh, yeah? Yeah, babe. You see it. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. All right. She must be in here somewhere. There's another one. Where? Over there. Hey, stop that. Oh, yeah? You stop. Oh! 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 oh. Don't, don't. Come here, you. Don't. What are you shooting those don't arrows for? Oh. Ow! Don't you dare hurt that child. Leave that kid alone. Hey, let go of her. Well, I told you to keep them in the cover. Yeah, but... Get it back to the house. All right, come on. Hey, let go of me. Come on. I'll show you what I'm doing. Go on, kids. Go. 
Go on, go on, keep moving. Come on, snap into it, sister. Oh, you can't talk to me like that. Do you know who my husband is? My sister's right. You can't. Inside, you. Now listen. Shut up. Okay. Oh. You don't mean me too, maybe, do you? Yeah. No. I do. Say, you ain't gonna let this shite you talk to me like that, are you? No, babe, honest. I wouldn't let him say a word to you. Think they saw them arrows from the plane? No, definitely not. Hmm. I would have circled back to investigate. Don't try any more tricks, kid. Oh, I won't. Shh. Do you hear something? No. What? Oh, I guess I was just hearing things. Well, quit it. I wish it was over with, Counselor. Can't we send Stubbs with a note now? No, it's too early. Come on, let's eat. Mm. But I don't understand this at all. Where's Mr. Stubbs going? Aren't we going with him? No, Mother, you might as well know. These men are holding us for ransom. Ransom? You mean they're working with him? Of course not. Right I... now. Hey, it's coming back. Don't be a fool. It's not the same plane. Any plane makes me sick. Why? That's funny. Doesn't sound as loud outside. No, doesn't. There it is. Hey, but it isn't. Oh, it's you again, is it? Oh, oh, sure. Just a gag, that's all. Just a gag. We've had enough of your gags. Get out. You go with her. Get out. Oh, well, I wasn't hungry anyway. But I am. On your way. Where? In the game room, anywhere. But you stay with her. You're responsible for her. One more gag from her and you get it. Do I make myself clear? Uh, uh, perfectly. Come on, Unc. Gee, Counselor, I don't like this delaying. He's right. I'm leaving for Miami right now. All right, but I still think it's too early. Yes. Hadn't you better wait? There's no use taking any unnecessary chances. Here's the note. And watch your step. All oh, a tough luck. Why, the pilot in that plane must have been asleep not to see those arrows. Oh, well. We've just got to think of something else. No, Jerry, no. You've caused enough trouble now. Me going practically without supper. Oh, well, I guess it's part of the price we pay for being so rich. If we didn't have money, nobody would want to hold us for ransom. Yeah, like back in Waterbank. Oh, gee, what I wouldn't give for those good old days and the fun we used to have and all the tricks we used to play. <laughs> Remember the radio gadget I rigged up for Sergeant O'Toole's birthday? Oh, you mean when he thought the commissioner was saying happy birthday to you? Do I? <laughs> That's it. What? I've got an idea. Please, Jerry, no. Don't think of anything. You heard what that Gower said. Oh, Pooh, that's just talk. Oof, Jerry, can't you understand? If those men had hold us for ransom, there isn't much they'd stop at. Why, they'd kill us without batting an eye. Oh, they couldn't do that, Uncle Ed. Then they wouldn't get any ransom. Besides, if you'll help me, we'll get rid of them for good. Now, remember how you... No, I don't remember a thing. Oh, sure you do. And look, could you use this for a microphone? Yeah. No, Jerry, no. Swell. And look, we can yank wires off these floor lamps. Oh, please, Uncle Ed. You know, you're the only one who can do it. And this is an emergency, a matter of life and death. That's what I'm afraid of. This is the one chance you've got to help Dad. And are you going to let him down after all he's done for you? Oh, well... I guess we all got to die sometime. Ah, uh, that's the way to talk.
boat. Why shouldn't he? Never mind now. I'll see you later. Oh, Uncle Ed, please hurry. This is the emergency. What'd you come back for? Well, I can't start the boat. Somebody swept the distributor head. All right, where is it? Where is it? I didn't take it. Take your hands off me. Wait a minute. That won't find anything. All right, who's got it? Uh, what? I don't even know what's lost. He's the only one who'd be planning a getaway of his own. You wouldn't be trying a little double cross, would you? I haven't got it, I tell you. I haven't even been near the beach. No, but the kid has. Don't you touch my sister. We interrupt this program to bring you the latest news on the Darlington case. Brought to you by that world-famous novelist, Miss Tallulah Preacher. Miss Preacher needs no introduction, as you are all acquainted with her regular morning program of a woman's views of the news. Miss Preacher. My friends, tonight my heart is breaking. For today I spent an hour with the world's most pitiful figure, J.C. Darlington. Oh, Jim. I found this tragic figure alone in his Miami Beach castle, the home he gave to his loved ones. But tonight, who knows where his loved ones may be? Fathers of America, put your feet in this poor man's shoes. I say poor, for to add to the crushing blow that has befallen J.C. Darlington in the loss of his loved ones, a whim of Wall Street today wiped out his great fortune. Every penny. And now with kidnappers probably at this very moment demanding a tremendous ransom, J.C. Darlington is bankrupt, unable to pay a single cent to obtain the return of his beloved wife, his beautiful daughters, and his ailing brother-in-law. For further details, from the human side, stay tuned to this station. Oh, poor Jim. Gee, honey, it's tough, I know. But at least he really had the dough. Oh, it's not the money, it's my poor husband. I must get to him. Hey, did that radio day mean we ain't gonna get any? Exactly. It just goes to show. Them Wall Street guys is crooks. If we could only get word to him. Why not? What's the matter? Oh, darling, you're fine. Come on, boys, we're scramming. Sure, but... Uh, you heard me. Things are getting too hot around here anyway. There may be more planes, and we're not taking this risk for nothing. The counselor's right, Stubbsy. Come on, baby. Sure. I can't get a divorce around here. All of you've got to take us with you. I must get to my husband. What? And have you found in our boat? Right now, we're trying to get rid of you. Oh! Gonna spam and the boat still don't run without no distributor head. No. Mr. Stubb, here's your head. Why, you... It's only a gag. You know, just a gag. Come on, let's go. Just a minute. I got some unfinished business. Oh, oh look out! He's cut off! He's in the back! He's in the back! He's in the Oh, no, you don't! Hey, listen, you leave my... Oh, no, no, no! Don't you touch him. Leave him alone. Don't you touch him. Leave him alone. Shovel and hit me instead. <laughs> <laughs> it 
was almost as much fun as meeting the kids across the tracks again. It's when you clunked them out. Oh. <laughs> well, I thought I'd split when Jerry jabbed him in the... Well, aren't you going with the others? You heard the radio. There isn't going to be any ransom. But I don't want any ransom. And I don't want any trouble from you. I've had just about enough of kidnappers. I have a good mind to wrap this around. Don't worry, dear. I'll take care of him. Oh, he'll be all right now, Mom. And just as soon as we hear another plane, I'll get my arrows and signal it. Oh, I hope it's soon, darling. We really should be with your father at a time like this. Poor Dad. I hope he isn't taking it too hard. Anyway, we've been broke before. Oh, but he isn't just... Now, Uncle Ed, wouldn't you like some supper? I'd be more than happy to fix it for you. What's the idea? Let him think it's true for a while. It'll do him good. Well, as I always say, what can't be cured must be endured. That's what I always say. Come on, come on, snap it up. Oh, what do you think I'm doing? Well, something's wrong. Say, if that kid... Wait till I get hold of that kid. Yeah, but don't forget you got to tangle with Mama Darlington first. Yeah, that's right. Good luck. You know, I think you're all being mighty swell about this, Virginia. Why? Because we don't mope over being poor again? Say, if you spent half of your time dodging phony titles and eligible chiselers, you'd be relieved, too. Well, then, if you don't mind being poor... Yes? Well, you see, I feel responsible. If I'd stayed with your father until he had come to, well, and hadn't listened to Jerry's crazy idea, well, maybe we could have done something about this and prevented it. <laughs> that silly Pete. How could you have helped? Well, you see, I still feel responsible. Yes. And if there's anything that I could do, well, for instance, a clerk's salary isn't much, but if you thought that you could... Uh, Pete, are you proposing? Oh, no. Why, I only met you this morning, and I haven't any right to... to... Oh, no. I wouldn't think of it. Ah! Ed, Jerry, he's choking Virginia. Help! Didn't I tell you I'd had enough? But, Mother, he just... What's the matter? What's happening? What is it? He's trying to strangle Virginia. I saw him. Uh-oh. Slugger or no slugger, you can't manhandle defenseless girls. They're coming back. Hand me that warming pan. saw flaming arrows and radioed Mr. Griggs here. He's a federal man. How do you do? See, it did work. But Pops, why did he circle back? So it's not to without suspicion. But I want to find out about you. Where are the kidnappers? He's the mastermind. Uh, no, he isn't. They're out in the boat. He's right here. He's the one. He is not. Please, please, make up your mind. If you don't hurry, those men on the boat will get away. Lieutenant, go get them. Oh, you don't have to worry. They won't get away. Very far. How do you know? Well, I, I gave him back their distributor head, but I kept these spark plugs. <laughs> nice work. Now we'll take care of you. Hey, what is this? Daddy's not a kidnapper. You know him. He works for you. Works? For me? Yes. You remember me, Mr. Darlington, this morning in Miami? Well, I never saw him before in my life. Take him to the plane. Wait a minute, please. Look, Pop, 
Remember the letter you wanted to send to your office? Oh, you know, the one about the Bennett Carlson merger, and I sneaked it out so Mom wouldn't know. Well, Pete here's the one who brought the papers down this morning. Good heavens, you... Then I got Pete to drive the boat, so you would have time to read the papers. Because if you had gone to the lodge, there'd have been a delay, and your option is only good until tomorrow noon. Tomorrow noon? That's right. Haven't you signed them? I, I don't remember. I don't think I... No, no, I didn't. The first thing I knew, I was in bed. And the police were telling me that my family had been kidnapped. I, now, wait, wait. Let me think. Have you... Have you read this deal thoroughly? Yes, I have, sir. What about it? Is it good? As good as gold, sir. But if we'd organize those fiduciaries, we'd have a Senate committee on our necks. However, by floating the straight issue of debenture bonds under the merger... Exactly what I wanted. I'll sign it as soon as we get back. And you can make New York by noon. My boy, you've got a good head. You'll get a big promotion out of this. Well, thank you, sir, but, uh... Will you... Well... Can you... Well, I mean... What about your finances now, sir? What in blazes are you talking about? You don't have to keep it from us, Tim. We know. Know what? About your going broke. We had Tallulah Preacher tell it on the radio. But I didn't go broke. And who is Tallulah Preacher? Why, uh... Well, there isn't any Tallulah Preacher. Oh, look, Dad, it was like this. I knew those crooks would let us alone if they thought you'd lost all your money. So I had Uncle Ed... So you had him fix the radio like he did for Sergeant O'Toole. And you were Tallulah Preacher. Jim, then you're not broke. <laughs> and you knew it all along and had the nerve to propose to me. Why, you're just like all the rest of them, you, you fortune hunter. Virginia, I... Take this thing off of me. I can't find the key. Oh, here it is. Virginia, Virginia, wait a minute, please. Now, what brought that on? Oh, never mind now, Pop. I'll tell you later. You can watch that near and I'll scream. <laughs> Virginia! Oh! Go on, scream some more. I didn't know the radio broadcast was a phony. And it wouldn't matter to me if you had all the money in the world. You're nothing but a suspicious, spoiled little brat, and that's final. Goodbye. Pete, don't go. I have been a spoiled brat. Please stop me a good one on the chin. Maybe I will. Oh, Pete, hit me again. And from now on, don't get any more ideas. Jim, shouldn't we do something? Yes. Keep him in the family. We can use a young man like that. What? He can take my place at the office. Fine. And see that you work. 